Disney dreamers, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to I Dream of Disney, where I talk all Disney all the time. Today I thought I'd share with you my three past Walt Disney World experiences, just so you guys can get a better understanding of how they were, and how often I've visited the parks in the past, which was not a lot as you can tell. I've only been on Walt Disney World property three times, um, and many of you may only even count two out of three of these experiences as, you know, a proper valid Disney World trip. So without further ado, let me just jump right into this video. So keep in mind, I am talking of myself being on actual Walt Disney World property. That's the key here. So the very first time that I was on Walt Disney World property was 14 years ago. Yeah, 14 years ago. I was 12 years old. I went with my uncle, his wife, their two kids and my cousins. I went with my aunt's mom and sister. And that's all that I remember going. But apparently my very favorite aunt who actually passed away last year was there with us as well. And the reason why I don't remember her being there, which really sucks because she's my favorite aunt and Disney, you know. But the reason why I don't remember her there is because we all took a picture in Walt Disney World. And for some reason she wasn't in the picture. I'll insert it here. Um, if I if I can but um, everyone was there except for my aunt in that picture so I don't have great memory of that trip there's no videos that's the only picture that I have and she wasn't even in there so that's why I don't remember her being there but uh, yeah 14 years ago was a long time I had to text my uncle to get some more information about you know the trip at all you know if we stayed on Disney property you know stayed on site on Disney property or not um, if he could remember the hotel name, how long we were there for, what was the occasion, um, you know, what other parks did we go to, because I know we went to Magic Kingdom, and I remember going to Epcot, but I don't remember going to Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom or any of the water parks, so I'm going to safely assume we went only to two parks, but I have no idea. I've blocked a lot of it out. There's just not enough concrete verification that you know, I went to other places besides Magic Kingdom and Epcot, you know what I mean? So I don't remember much of the trip, um, but I remember having fun. I remember us driving down there from New York to Florida, so it took anywhere between 17 to 20 hours, give or take. And I remember as soon as we got there that it was downpouring like crazy, and we couldn't go to the parks. So I don't know if we had planned to go to the parks as soon as we got there, but I just know, or I just knew that it was raining and we had to stay in the hotel and I was very, very upset. I was being a very big brat about it. But yeah, um, for Epcot, I don't have much memory. I remember doing Soarin and back then it was Soarin around California. So I remember that. I don't remember like the imagery much or the smells or anything, but I do remember being in the seat and being hoisted up into the air and feeling like I was flying so of course that's such a you know memorable ride so of course it's you know unforgettable um and then in Magic Kingdom I have very few memories I remember eating a funnel cake <laughs> I re or maybe that was an Epcot you know like in the uh land pavilions I'm not sure but I remember eating a funnel cake at Disney World I remember doing Stitch's Great Escape and his like chili cheese dog breath thing I remember Space Mountain and how much I wanted to ride the front, but my uncle wouldn't let me. I don't know if it was because I was small, because I was really tiny as a kid, or he just wanted to be a big kid. Whatever. And I also remember watching Philhar Magic and, you know, having it be like the most magical thing ever. So I'm so glad that um, every time I've gone to Magic Kingdom, which was only twice, which you will uh, hear later, but uh, both times I've got to see her magic so hopefully I can just continue that tradition and see it like every time I'm there and when I watch it I'll feel like and know that I'm at Disney World at least Magic Kingdom. Also while I texted my uncle to get more information which he didn't really provide that much because he didn't remember a lot of it at all since it was 14 years ago he did tell me that they temporarily lost my little cousin their oldest son in Magic Kingdom. Like, they lost him long enough for him and my aunt to have to go find him. But can you imagine, like, losing your child in Walt King or uh, Magic Kingdom? Like, I can't imagine what the protocol must be. I don't know if it changed within the 14 years. It probably has. But I can just imagine having a child 
being lost in Magic Kingdom and freaking out, and it must have been crazy, like a hectic time, but thank goodness, you know, they found him and everything is fine. That, unfortunately, is when my memories of myself being at Walt Disney World when I was 12 years old draw to a close. The second time that I stepped foot onto Walt Disney World property was last year, actually, in March of 2017. I went with my boyfriend, Christian, his friend, Leo, and two of his friends. So there was five of us, and we again drove down from New York to Florida. It was such a long time. This time, it was like 20 to 23 hours, give or take. No, it was definitely 20 hours or more. We stopped in basically almost every single state, and it, it just took forever. We, like, it was five of us in this two-door small like very small truck and three of us were in the back and there was like only two seats and it wasn't like it wasn't like regular car seats it was like the fold-out seats it, it was horrible <laughs> absolutely grotesque but we got there safe and sound we stayed off property because we weren't planning to go to Walt Disney World um, we were just going for an Orlando vacation just for spring break so we stayed at like a one of those sweet inns kind of thing um, on I, what is it called? I Drive, I Orlando Drive, whatever it's called, I don't know, but it's off site, you know, off Disney World property. And um, here is how we actually got on Disney World property. We didn't have any plans, you know, going to Orlando. We were just going to go for five weekdays and do whatever. The first night we got there, we didn't do anything. The second day, um, we went to the beach and we didn't have any plans and we were like, you know, we got to kind of come up with something to do while we're here. So I looked online and I found a lot of cheap to free things that you can do around the area. And one of the things that popped up of, you know, free things you can do in Orlando is actually go to Disney Springs. I've never heard of Disney Springs up until that point. I didn't even know what Downtown Disney was. I didn't know it was formally known as Downtown Disney and got reinvented into Disney Springs. So me being a Disney fan, but being a Disney fan that hasn't been to the parks in 13 years at that time, was very pleasantly surprised to find that there was an entertainment complex that was not heavily themed for Disney, but it was a part of Disney, which I loved. And I love that it was free. And of course, I'm sure the others appreciated that. So I remember just coming down from that escalator and seeing the beautiful fountain, seeing all of the shops and the restaurants, and it was like just a dream come true. And even like we were walking around and we saw a sign to do like the ferry boats, we were like, is this free? What is this? Where do you go? And it was just like, you know, every 10 steps we found something that we just had no idea what was going on. There was a pleasant surprise behind every corner. The art store that has like art pieces for six hundred dollars and the candy stores and just it was unbelievably amazing i had a really fun time we stayed there for practically all day and it was just amazing so even though it's technically not going to disney world because when we think of disney world we think of the theme parks we were technically on disney world property because disney springs is you know on walt disney world resort grounds so yeah don't try to argue with me okay and the third and last time that i've been on walt disney world property was again last year but this time in august of 2017 for my 25th birthday i actually took three days and went to uh jersey shore with my boyfriend and my best friends and a lot of my boyfriend's friends and then for the next five days after that me and my best friend jasmine flew down to Orlando and spent the next five weekdays in Orlando. We again stayed off-site because that's just the cheapest thing to do and we were on a severely tight budget. So we stayed at a Comfort Inn uh, Main Gate Resort in Kissimmee, Florida. It was incredible. It was a really, really nice day, really great service. Um, I mean, the pool was closed one day. We had to go to the next hotel over, but I mean, that's really not a big deal. Um, but we had park maps available to us and our room key was Pandora themed which sucks because we didn't get to go to Pandora. The five days we were there we were still on Walt Disney World property. We went hotel hopping and this was for the monorail resort. So we went to the Grand Floridian first which I'm sorry but it was very beautiful don't get me wrong but I felt just so uncomfortable being there because it was so grand so luxurious and I just felt like, okay, they're going to, like, notice that I don't belong here at any minute. 
pick me up and kick me out. I just felt awkward, you know, going hotel hopping. We went to Art of Animation earlier that day, which was the best and definitely my number one dream hotel to stay at. Um, and we Ubered there and the Uber driver was like, okay, I'm going to tell the toll booth person that, or I'm going to tell the booth person that you're here for a uh, check-in. I didn't like that. I was like, why can't we just hotel hop? It was just very weird and awkward, but, um, Art of Animation was amazing. And then the Grand Floridian, again, it was great. We didn't get to explore that much just because I was very self-conscious of being there. Um, I attempted to watch the Cinderella and Prince Charming Waltz, but throughout the week it was raining and very cloudy and I switched days with different activities, so I messed up the days. I didn't get to see the waltz, but that's okay. Um, so the Grand Floridian, we didn't really stay there that long. Then we hopped over to the Polynesian Beach Resort, which was phenomenal, and that's my second goal, uh, my second hotel go to stay at. It was unbelievable. We had a very relaxing time. I had a sandwich at Captain Cook's. It had chicken teriyaki and pineapple, and it changed my life. I now tolerate pineapple. Up until then, I hated it, but it was very, very peaceful and just so needed. And then we went to the Contemporary Resort last. We had an amazing time. Jasmine and I uh, played games in the arcade because we're big kids. And we shopped in the little shop. I think it's next to Chef Mickey's. I'm not sure. And then we went outside and took pictures with like the greenery and you know the Mickey statues. And we were like running up and down the stairs just acting silly. And then we took sunset pictures and we got to see Cinderella's castle in the distance. And it gave us such excitement for the next day because we went to Magic Kingdom and that was the only park that we got to go to throughout the week because Walt Disney World is not cheap you guys it was very expensive it's about a hundred dollars or so for you know entry tickets and we just couldn't swing it I just wanted some Disney magic for a little bit so besides Magic Kingdom and hotel hopping we went to Disney Springs and I think that's about it but the next day we went to Magic Kingdom Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. So I remember planning like an hour and a half to two hours of waiting in line <laughs> when we got there because I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know that it wasn't, you know, a, a line to get into, like there was no line to get into Magic Kingdom. We got there and uh, we, we took an Uber and we got to like the ticket station and then I think we had to take the monorail. Sorry, I'm talking very fast. We had to take the monorail to the entrance, and we got in as soon as we got there. It was amazing. Like, we got in, and I was just like, hold on. Are, are we in? Can we just stop and take a second? Like, are we in Magic Kingdom? That's what we were saying. It was hilarious. Um, we got there about 8.45-ish. Um, so the park wasn't technically open to the public yet, but we still could, like, we watched the trolley show, and... We were just looking at the pumpkin decorations. We went to the bathroom to just like get, get ready for the day. We took, took a look at um, Roy Disney statue. And uh, then we took pictures in front of the castle. And it was just so amazing. We saw the morning welcome show, which was so cute. And then the day began. We went straight to Adventureland. Because I kind of, people say when they go to the parks, they have a tendency to lean right. But for some reason, I had a tendency, I, I like, I just thought to lean left. I thought it would be smart to do it clockwise instead of the other way. I don't know. That's just me. And that's weird because I'm a right-handed person. But we went to Adventureland first. And we did Magic Carpet of Aladdin, which is amazing. Um, it's Jasmine's favorite Disney movie, Aladdin. So it was just nice to do that with her. We did the Swiss Family Treehouse, which was okay. Um, I would do it again. But I just didn't know what I was looking at. I just thought it was a cool tree house. I didn't even know it was based off of a Disney movie. Um, we did the Enchanted Tiki Room, which I loved. I thought it was going to be kind of silly. But I love the song. It was very entertaining, very tropical. I think also before Adventureland, we went to meet Mickey at the Town Square Theater. And that was hilarious. He tried to do some magic trick with his cards and it just wasn't happening but it was a really fun interaction all right so we also did Pirates of the Caribbean which was very cool and we did Jungle Cruise which was very funny <laughs> then we went over to Frontierland and Splash Mountain was down for refurbishment which I was very disappointed 
about, but what can you do? So we hopped over to Big Thunder Mountain, which was amazing. I had a really fun time on that ride. Um, I think Fantasyland must have been next. So we did It's a Small World, iconic and classic. Um, it was fine. Don't get me wrong. We waited a really long time. I remember that. It had to have been like 30 to 40 minutes. And it was visually beautiful. It was entertaining. I think just the animatronics kind of creep me out a little bit. And generally they don't. It's just those specific animatronics kind of creep me out a little bit. I don't know if it's because they're each culturally dressed differently. And the song is just not my favorite. It's not like torture or anything. Like I would definitely go on it again, especially if I'm going with someone who's never been to Disney before. It's not my favorite ride though, um, but I just feel like going to Disney for the first time especially, it's kind of like a must-do, must-see kind of thing. Um, so that was that. We did Journey to the Little Mermaid. That's big for me in Magic Kingdom. Like I think that in Magic Kingdom, besides Space Mountain, is my favorite. It's just, it's my favorite princess, and she's in her element, and you get to sing all the songs, and it's so much fun. I love it. <laughs> I love Journey to the Little Mermaid. Um, then we did Enchanted Tales with Belle, and uh, that made me cry for the first time that day, because this cute, adorable little girl, she must have, like, loved Belle. Has uh, Belle like bent down to like be with her and like hug her or whatever? And then when Belle walked away, the little girl was like, <coughs> and she was like doing all these like exciting like little noises. It was so cute. I cried. I was like, this is too much, Disney. What are you doing? Um, we saw Phil Her Magic again. I don't remember too much what else we did in Fantasy Land. I remember the Tangled Bathrooms was beautiful. We did Peter Pan's flight, which you guys. I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad because we stayed off site Disney prop. We stayed off of Disney property. So we were only eligible for a 30 day fast pass window as opposed to a 60 day pass window. Um, so we weren't left with that many choices for fast passes, but we somehow scored Peter Pan like ones. We did Enchanted Tales with Belle and we did Space Mountain. Didn't need one for Enchanted Tales with Belle. I'm so mad that we did that, but it, whatever, it's fine. Peter Pan's flight, we definitely needed it, but I felt like the ride was way too short. I felt like I personally didn't see Peter Pan a lot. Maybe that's just my opinion. I just wanted to see him more, and maybe even Tinkerbell, but I just, I don't think I got what I needed out of that ride, and I was just really mad. And we went to, like, Winnie the Pooh right after, and I remember, like, loving that ride, like, way more than Peter Pan. I'm not, like, a huge Peter Pan flight Fan, or I'm, I'm not a huge Peter Pan fan, and I'm not a huge Winnie the Pooh fan, but that Winnie the Pooh ride is so much more fun. I think it's it's a lot longer, I feel, and I understand that there's not much space to work with with Peter Pan, but with Winnie the Pooh, there was just so much more visual amazement, I feel, or wonder. And then the bouncing section with Tigger, and I love the storybook feel of it. That's just my personal opinion. I prefer Winnie the Pooh over Peter Pan's Flight. And if I do Peter Pan's Flight next time, which I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to not do a Fast Pass for it. I'm going to try to do it, you know, way early in the morning so that I would only wait maybe like 20 minutes. I would even wait a half an hour. I hear the queue is, you know, pretty cool. And another thing about Disney World that I love I don't think I mentioned what I loved about Disney World, but I really enjoyed the interactive queues that they had there. Like, Big Thunder Mountain's queue was really cool, and Winnie the Pooh's uh, uh, queue was amazing, especially for little children. If you are from the New York area, or maybe even New Jersey area, and you've been to Six Flags, which is an amusement park, then you'll know those rides, the, the ride lines, especially in the summer, is just so unbearable and so torturing because there's nothing to do in the lines but entertain yourself on your phone or with whoever you are with and you're you know being beat down by the sun and there's just nothing to do but when Walt Disney World there's you know cool interactive games and just things that you know you can do to pass the time while you're waiting like 30 to 40 minutes or even longer some rides you have to wait two hours for 
But anyway, um, after Fantasyland, of course, we went to Tomorrowland, and I didn't research Tomorrowland that much. I had no idea what to expect. Stitches Ride was down. We went to Monsters Inc. Lot 4, which was really funny, and we went to Space Mountain, which was amazing, but that's all we did, and I wish I would have known what Carousel of Progress was. I thought it was just a carousel, so I didn't even go on. I had no idea what the People Mover was. I thought it was boring. There was a lot of things that we didn't do in Tomorrowland. We literally only did, like, three things, um, or maybe, like, two things, so that was very short-lived. So by the time we were finished with Tomorrowland, it was just about time for dinner. We went to Friar's Nook, and I got a barbecue chicken mac and cheese, which was so good for me. I really love cheap-tasting food. I mean, it depends on what it is. I love cheap-tasting food. That's what I grew up on, so it was great. <laughs> I used a Disney gift card. It was it was just great. I liked it. Um, and then it was time for the fireworks. So I saw Once Upon a Time, that castle projection show, which was okay. Um, I remember liking it, but not as much as the fireworks. And obviously, they're two different things. But I, I just feel like the castle projection, I thought would have made me cry or made me feel emotional. It, it was just, it was okay. It was okay. I don't think I need to see it again. The fireworks, you guys, definitely made me cry, okay? When it's after the first set, like after the Happily Ever After song, and it turns into its Yana song, and then it gradually turns into the Little Mermaid song, like, when I hear the Little Mermaid song on that fireworks show, and I, like, watch it at work, too. Like, I'll watch it on my phone. I'll just start to cry. Like, I don't know. I just love it so much. It was great. Me, Moana came on, and we were just screaming our lungs out. And then the, the hero part of the fireworks show, like, towards the end with Hercules and, like, Toy Story on there and, and, and Merida. And, oh, my God. I loved Happily Ever After. I regret to say I never saw Wishes in person. I saw it online, and it was, it looked great for what it was back in the day, but I'm so glad they updated it to Happily Ever After. It looks so much better. But yeah, so once the show started to end, I booked it to try to go to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train because that was the one ride that I was looking forward to doing, and we couldn't get fast passes for it. And as I was trying to run, everyone started screaming and, like, just being very chaotic, and I was like, what's going on? And Jasmine was like, oh, look, that's Tinkerbell. And I had to, like, get my phone out because <laughs> I wanted to get her on um, on my phone, but, like, it was almost too late, so I got, like, a second of her on uh, on my vlog, and then we just, like, ran over to try to go to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, and by the time we got there, it was already too late. Like, first of all, the line couldn't have been more than, like, two hours. Second, the park officially closed to the public, so they were like, sorry, you can't stay here. Only Disney World Resort guests can stay here. And I just felt like, yeah, like that. I, I felt so excluded, so betrayed. So we unfortunately had to leave, and you guys, my feet were so done. You guys, wear comfy shoes. I'm going to make a tips video. I'm going to make a video about what I wish I would have researched or, you know, should have done differently but I bought these like five dollar pairs of shoes from a craft store and I bought one for Jasmine as well so we can like match like that um <laughs> and we looked cute and everything Minnie Mouse loved our outfits but the shoes weren't broken in they didn't have like any support for the bottom of our feet so it was like kind of like walking on the floor walking on the ground all day long so there was intense shooting pains in my feet, and I ha I don't have a thigh gap, so my thighs were running together the entire day, and it was like 90 degrees. You get the picture. I was just over it. <laughs> I was so done, and there was like massive, massive crowds of people trying to get out of the parks at the same time. It was just completely chaotic, but it was still magical throughout all the chaos. <laughs> so guys, that is all of my Walt Disney World experiences that I've done in the past. They were all very different. Every time you go to Walt Disney World, I'm sure it's different, and I can't wait to go next year, August. We are eight months away, you guys, and 
actually, we're still over eight months away, but we're less than nine months away. I don't have the final details of it. I don't know if we're going for one week or a week and a half or two weeks. It's looking like I can't afford the two weeks, and that will be really depressing, but I know for sure I'm definitely, I'm definitely, I know I'm definitely still going on August 20th. It's just a matter of how long we're going to stay there. But we are staying on Walt Disney World property, which I'm really excited about. It's going to be amazing. So you guys, please click subscribe if you haven't done so already and if you're interested in Disney videos because this is the spot for you. And click that notification bell button so you don't miss a single video. And give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it so I know that I'm creating good content for you guys. Lots more Disney videos are coming out. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Isn't she pretty?